is web design still good to learn in 2018? Now, you know I'm having a bad hair day, and that's why I'm doing a screencast vlog. So I got a question recently from this enterprising young dude out of Canada, my home country. So I'm going to read a couple of the quotes here, which are highlighted, and I'm going to get into it. I've been following your videos over the past month. I love the stuff you put out. You've also inspired me to get into web development. Thanks. I really like getting those type of emails, by the way. It's great. It's good to know that I'm helping people out and that people appreciate the work. So he goes on. I've made a few WordPress sites, WP is short for WordPress, with commercial themes and also some small client sites with site builders. We all know them, Wix and so on. Now, I know there are drag and drop site builders, Wix and so on, that are super easy to create, no code need. In fact, I did a website for a family member who owns a, who owns a cleaning business. She went from having a basic terrible looking WordPress site, which she paid a lot of money to, to have done by an agency. So I decided to whip up a nice looking site with a site builder that turned out nicely and quickly done. So here's a good question. With the rise in popularity of those drag and drop builders, especially for smaller businesses, do you think getting into WordPress development, WP, short for WordPress, will be viable and worth getting into? Will there still be a demand in the near future? Short answer is yes, because the drag and drop site builders, they do fill a particular niche, no question. But what you're going to see is a lot of companies are going to quickly outgrow them and they're going to need something more serious. They're going to need something custom. So just in terms of the design itself, they're going to quickly see that using the drag and drop tools, they look good, but they're going to look very template-y. You know, they, they are templates. So they're going to want a little customization. You have to understand something. As a web professional, whether you're a web designer, a WordPress professional, whether you're a web developer, etc., etc., the game, the role, the work that you do will slowly change over time. This is nothing new. I've been doing this since the 1990s. In 1990, the way we designed websites was totally different. And our roles, our specific task was very different back then versus year 2001 and versus today. It's an evolving field. It's an evolving career where we have better and better tools. So instead of having to do the, the bare bones minimum type of stuff back in the 90s, today we have a lot of tools that allows us to produce much better, more advanced websites and web apps than we did back in the 90s simply because the tools are there. And that's cool. That's cool. So, yes, the roles do change. It reminds me of an old story. Back in the 90s when I first learned how to code, a friend of mine was a coding professional as well. He wasn't really a developer, but he knew code. And he was, we call them webmasters. So he knew a bit about creating websites, but he knew about servers, knew about this, knew about that. It was a term that we used back in the day, the webmaster. So he stepped away from the whole web design and the whole web world for a few years in, I believe in 98, he stepped away and he came back in about 2001 and two. And he was flabbergasted at how, flabbergasted uh, means he was astounded, amazed at how much web design had changed just in like that four year period. It was a dramatic change when we went from table-based design practices to CSS-based design practices, amongst other things. So today, in 2017 and 18, we see that again. We see a shift from design-only web professionals to a blended type of professional where you have front-end design skills, but you have to understand a bit about usability which is UX, you have to understand UI, you have to understand how the structure of the web works, if you will, how Google works, how social networking plays into all this. And when you put yourself out there as a web design or development professional, you come into it with a broader range of skills, a different set of skills that you would have needed in 2002. It's cool. It's cool. So, for instance, I list in my little article here one of the things you would get into. Although this is not not new, but the way you would do it is new. Setting up e-commerce. Setting up e-commerce now, it's still a job, and the average Joe will not 
be able to do it. But it's much easier today than it was just 10 years ago, uh, setting up a social strategy for your clients. So they probably have a Facebook, but getting hooked up to Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, when it's smart to use one or the other, and integrating that with their site. The uh, templates don't do that job. The builders don't do this type of thing. Setting up a content marketing strategy. You know, again, educating your clients in terms of content marketing, setting up perhaps a blog situation, a WordPress, where they can put out articles on a regular basis and showing them how this workflow, how to integrate this with their social strategy as well. So you see, a web professional has a different set of skills that, that they have to have when they come to the table. It's not just design a good-looking site, uh, sketch it up in Photoshop, and uh, Bob's your uncle, I'm out of here. There's much more involved. It's not more work for you. It's just different work. And it's actually more fun, in my opinion, because you get to put your hands into different areas, get a little bit into e-commerce, a little social, a little content marketing. And of course, you've got the custom design. So people who don't want that template-ish look that you get so often with these site builders, this is what you can do to bring, to bring more to the whole equation. There's a big part of it. You're a web professional. You're not just a web designer. You're a web professional. So you will advise them, okay, this is where we want to use WordPress. Or maybe you don't want to go, maybe some some, some, some occasions you might want to get into Drupal or Joomla. These are other content management systems. Although most of the time you're going to be just using WordPress. If your clients are going to be thinking about a content marketing strategy, which they should, because if you're not, you're, you're not going to get much traction out there. So there you go. Yes, there's a huge opportunity. I know people who have WordPress sites, business owners, and they're dying to find a decent WordPress developer to keep it up to date and to make changes and so forth. And they're aware of all the, the website builders and so on, but they're not interested because they got real businesses and they don't want to look like somebody who just started up their company uh, two days ago, right? They, they want that professionalism. 